Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to debug an application. Because for all of those thousands of videos out there showing you how to make something, none of them actually show you how to properly debug a problem that you run into while building your own application. And debugging is the most important skill any developer can have. So let's get started now. Here is a sample application that we're going to use that's riddled with bugs right now, but we're going to slowly debug all of the different problems inside of it. To show you what the application is supposed to do is it has a list of users, it's going to loop through those users, and for each user it just wants to print that user's name and how old they will be in 5 years. So let's run this, and we can see immediately that we have a syntax error. It says uncaught syntax error, unexpected token, curly brace, and it tells us this occurs in script.js on line number 8. Anything that comes after the colon here, that's the actual line number the error occurred on, and then the thing before the colon is the exact file that that error occurred. So we know that this error is right here, line number 8, in our script.js file, which is this file right here. And syntax errors are the most common type of error you're going to run into when you're first starting to learn how to program. And a syntax error just means that the code that you've written cannot be parsed, it's not written properly. So we're missing here something. And that's why the JavaScript engine right here cannot parse it, and it says that there's a syntax error, so we need to find it out. And the bad thing about syntax errors is a lot of times the error message is really not correct. Right here it says that we're missing a left curly brace. But in actuality, we're not missing a left curly brace. So if we go over here, we see we have a left curly brace with a red squiggly under it. And this is Visual Studio Code, our text editor, telling us there's a syntax error. And if we highlight over it, you see that it says comma is expected. And that's because, as you can see here on the line above with the name Sarah, we forgot to put a comma at the end of our line. This is really common and easy to forget. So if we add a comma in here, that error is going to go away, as you can see in Visual Studio Code. And if we reload our page, you'll see we get another syntax error. This one just says unexpected identifier. Again, it's on line 8. But this error message, again, is just not at all useful. But luckily, with any modern text editor, we're going to get that error highlighting in the text editor for us. And as you can see, we highlight over this red squiggled age, and it says comma expected again. And that's because we forgot to put the comma between our name and age properties of this object. Let's add that in and save. And we're getting another error for our syntax error. And this one is the exact same error, unexpected identifier, which is pretty much completely useless. But it tells us that this occurs in script.js on line 16, since that's after the colon. And one thing you can do is you can actually click on this, and it'll open up that file where this error occurs inside of your developer tools here. For example, this is Chrome. But I just find it easier to go into the file in Visual Studio Code and look at the error there. And if we do, down on line 16, we see that there's no error on line 16. We don't have any red squigglies. So clearly, how is this correct? But the problem is, right below that on line 17, if we highlight over this, we get a red squiggly here, and it says declaration or statement expected. And again, this is really not that useful of an error message. So anytime that I have a syntax error, and I don't have a very easy or good error message to look at, the first thing I look for is missing commas, missing semicolons, or any other form of missing thing that goes between different things, like maybe missing quotes, for example. And the next thing I look for is my curly braces. Because curly braces and parentheses, those are really hard to get right sometimes when you have super nested objects. So the next thing I look for is curly braces. And as we can see here, the, very obviously, this function does not have an opening curly brace. For example, this left curly brace here is completely missing. Now if we put that left curly brace in, you see it matches our ending curly brace. And we can click save. And now we're starting to get our information printed out. And this actually looks like it's correct, but there's a problem. There's a bug in here that's not actually entirely inherent. As you can see, if we read these, it looks like everything is going well until we get down to fill. And it says user fill will be NAN years old in five years, and NAN just stands for not a number. And this is because, as you can see, fill doesn't have an age specified. And so when we try to add nothing to five, we're getting not a number. So this is a little bit of a bug that kind of creeps into your code that you may not realize because there is no error to debug this. But since we know that fill doesn't have an age, and we're trying to use our age down here, all we need to do is just put an if statement in here. So we can just say if user, whoops, user.age is not equal to null, then what we want to do is just our original console.log. So we can just copy this up and paste it here. But if the user's age is null, we can just come down here and we can console.log something a little bit different. We can say user, whoops, user is called, and then we can just put, whoops, their name. So we can say user.name. Now if we save that, you see that it says user is called fill. So that's working perfectly fine because we're skipping over that age section. So now that we've covered syntax errors as well as hidden bugs that come in that don't actually show up as errors, let's take a look at another kind of error that's really common by looking at a different application. 
Here's the next application that we're going to take a look at, and it's really straightforward. We have a button and an input element, and every time we click the button, we want to print whatever is typed in the input element, and our index.html again has that input as well as that button. So let's run this and see what happens. Go over to our JavaScript, and immediately we see that we have an uncaught type error, cannot read property, add event listener of null, and it says it's occurring in our JavaScript at line 4, which is this button add event listener right here. And essentially this error is saying it cannot read add event listener of null, and we're calling add event listener on our button, so for some reason our button is null. And this is an incredibly common error. Having something be null and trying to call something on it is something that you will have come up all the time when you're programming, and it can be a little bit difficult to debug because you may not know why this element is null. So one of the easiest things that you can do just to start off with to make sure you have the correct element that you're trying to debug is just throw in a console.log. So we can just say console.log button because this says that button is null, at least we think it says that. So if we save this and print, you see that it is correctly saying that our button is actually null. So now we need to figure out why our button is null. So what we need to do is find where we initialize our button right here, const button equals document dot get element by ID button. So we can see, okay, do we have an element with that ID? We go to our index and we see it actually has the ID of BTN. So if we come back into our script, all we need to do is just change this to BTN. Now when we save, you see that it correctly prints out our button because it's not null and we no longer get that error. So now let's try to type something in here and click print and you'll notice we get another error. This is the exact same error. Essentially it says uncaught type error cannot read property value of null and it's saying this occurs on line 7 which is right here. So we have again a problem with something being null. So in order to check this all we need to do is first print out our input because we think our input is null because we're trying to call dot value on it which is what we're saying over here it cannot read. So let's print our input. We save that and we see again our input is null. So what we need to do is figure out why our input is null. If we go to here we see that we're getting an element with id text elem but if we go into our index, we have this called text element. So instead, we just copy that over, whoops, paste that in here. And now when we save, we type something in here and click print, you see that's properly printing out. And in general, you're not going to be able to have this problem of debugging be so easy because most of the time you'll have, for example, your input, and then you're going to do something down here where you're going to set input equal to something else. And maybe again, later your input's going to get set to something else. And it's constantly going to be getting changed over and over. So what you want to do is you want to first put your log here at the very beginning, right when you initialize your element and you want to make sure it's correct. Then you just move it down to the next section where you set it and make sure it's correct after that. And again, you do the same thing after the next time you set it and you find where in that chain of events this input gets set to null or undefined or something that you do not want. And once you figure out where that point is, you know that if, for example, here it is null, but here it's not null, you know that somehow this line right here, line six, is what caused your input to become null. Another thing that can really help if you're stuck on an error, for example, you've tried all of these different tricks and nothing is really letting you figure out exactly what the error is, is you take the error message exactly as it occurs over here on the side, you copy it and paste it into Google and search for that and that'll drastically help you find the error because most likely someone else has ran into that error and they actually have an answer on how to solve that exact problem. It may not be exactly the same as your issue because their code is obviously going to be different but the steps to solve that problem will be, hopefully, the same as what you'll need to solve your problem. So now that we've talked about a couple of the really common debugging issues you'll run into, let's talk about the different tools that you have to debug these problems. And the first one we've already talked about is the console log, essentially just being able to print out a value at the exact point in that code, whatever it is. This is probably the most common way you'll debug problems, and in my opinion, one of the easiest and quickest ways to debug things because putting in a console.log is incredibly easy. It just takes a second to type that out and then rerun your application to see what that exact value is. But sometimes just logging out a value isn't enough because you actually want to mess with things when you're in that exact point in the code. And this can be done by using breakpoints. So let's set this code back to its working version, save it. And what we want to do is we want to go over to the sources tab inside of our debugging tools. And here we have our, our script.js. We just click on it here. And as you can see, this is our exact file. And what we can do is we can click on one of these numbers over here. For example, let's click on number five, and this is going to set a breakpoint. So now whenever our code gets to this section, it's going to stop executing and pause. So let's show an example of that. We're going to come in here, type something out and click print. And immediately, as you can see, our code is completely paused and we're at this line and we have access to what everything is. For example, hovering over something, we have all of the different contents of that element. For example, here's our input. Here's our button when we highlight over it. Instead of here, here's our input value when we highlight over it, and it just pauses our code right here. We even have down here our scope, which has all of our different variables for our local context, global context, 
script context. It just has a ton of information. And best of all is if we have our console open, we can actually use our console. So we can say input and it's going to print out our input. We can say input.value. And for example, this is our value and we can actually change our code. We can say input.value and we just want to set that equal to null, for example. Whoops, I spelled null incorrectly. There we go, let's put it as null. So now our input.value is null. So if we say input.value, we can see that this is empty. And now when we let our code run by just going back over to our sources section and clicking the play button, it's just going to resume. And now we go back to our console. You'll see that we've printed out nothing because we changed our input.value to nothing. And then the rest of our code ran that console.log over here ran to print the value. But since we've changed the value to nothing, it now printed nothing. So that really shows you the power of when you put in these breakpoints, you can actually change your code, modify your code, run things. You can really deep dive into exactly what your code looks like at that exact moment. Another thing you can do, let's hit that breakpoint again, is you can click some of these buttons. Step over will allow you just to go to the very next line of your code, while step in will actually go into the function that you're calling. So if we click step in, for example, if we are calling a function here, it would go into that function that we just called. But since there is no function, it'll just go to the very next line. As you can see, we're on line six. We can just click step again, and now we're stepping into some other code that's not actually written by us. So we can just click the play button to continue. But these step buttons are really useful for allowing us to granularly step by our code line by line by line to really deep dive into what is happening inside of our code. Debugging your code this way though is a bit more advanced and not as useful if you're trying to debug a small problem. But when you have a difficult problem that you're having a hard time figuring out the solution to and the console.logs aren't doing it for you, I highly recommend throwing in some breakpoints because it really gives you a ton of information about what your code is doing at the exact moment it hits that breakpoint. And that's all you need to know to get started debugging your own code. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos, which are linked over here. And also subscribe to the channel for more videos of me simplifying the web for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.